so let's talk last about some uh well one bit of a problem that arri- that uh Carson raises for Holly's knowledge condition um and I want to talk mostly about this just to help us get a little bit more clear about exactly what Holly is claiming. So um, remember that the knowledge condition is basically something like the salesperson needs to provide all the information that a reasonable consumer who's buying that kind of thing uh, would need to determine whether the purchase is in her interest. Um, and remember, he's, he led into this. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Uh, ah, there we go. He led in this by, um, you know, initially suggesting that the person use or the salesperson use herself to model the consumer and figure out the consumer's needs. But as we talked about, that's not very good. So instead he moved to uh, something more like a uh, reasonable person standard. But he does talk in a few places about uh, saying, well, what would the reasonable consumer want to know? And that's something that Carson jumps on. So uh, Carson jumps on that and says things which, if that's what really Holly wanted to say, you know, that it was, well, what would the reasonable person want to know? Well, they want to know um, basically everything, you know, as much as you can possibly tell me. But that creates problems, right? Because, um, you know, you have other customers that you need to sell to in order to, um, uh, well, not get fired, right? So if you have 20 accounts that you need to call a day and one of the cust- one of the accounts insists on taking up you know six hours of your time uh so that you can you know asking you questions about every single little thing um you wouldn't be able to get through the day and if you need to give all the information that the customer would want to know, well, that seems like you're now in a bit of a pickle right because the theory is telling you that to be ethical, you need to give more information than you can you know. Uh, actually give, right? So there's a couple of things we can say about this, and we'll talk about them probably in a different video. But I think the first things to notice here um, are just that, remember, a reasonable person, we do have that phrase, you know, don't be unreasonable, right? It's somebody who is, you know, has good sense, and who isn't gonna, you know, expect to be uh, given everything in the universe. So with respect to the case I just gave, you know, the, the one customer that wants to monopolize all your time uh, looking for uh, answers to uh, every possible question, looking for every bit of information, I think it would be okay to just say, um, look, that's an unreasonable demand, right? It's not reasonable for you to demand that the your sales rep lose their job so that you can have every single possible question. So when we're imagining the reasonable consumer, um, we're not imagining somebody who's going to ask for more than the the sales rep could reasonably uh, give. And so that's the first thing to say in response to Carson's charge that hey, somebody's going to want to know way more than this partic- than this could you know. Uh, Sorry, somebody's going to want to know way more than the rep could possibly tell them. Um, again, also, there's the reasonableness assumption is always going to be a bit contextual. It's always going to depend on, you know, the kind of thing we're talking about selling. Um, are we talking about people coming out off the street? Are we talking about um, all sorts of things like that? Uh, all of the things we've talked about already. So, Notice, remembering that we're not thinking about just anyone, but of uh, somebody who's reasonable within the particular kind of exchange, uh, that can help probably reduce the amount of information that you would need to give. Um, and third, um, my take on it is that um, really uh, Carson's taking Holly to be way more um, serious about this wanting than, than he actually is. I think it's probably just a slip. Right. He he didn't mean to say that, you know, it's just kind of a natural way to talk, but he doesn't really mean you should be concerned what the person would want to know. He's just trying to give you an intuitively usable guideline. Um, and because and I think that's uh, uh, gets some more credibility. If you just remember that he's not just, you know, saying out of the blue, oh, you've got to give them all the information a reasonable person would want. Um, no, that's a guideline for figuring out the real answer, which is what do you need to know to have a decent shot 
at having a mutually be beneficial exchange, right? And if you remember that that's the real guideline, or I mean, that's the real thing that determines what the salesperson needs to do. And then that allows you to say, okay, well, then this talk about a reason, you know, asking what a reasonable person would want to know. Well, that's just, you know, that that's, that's just a way of getting at sort of the main question, how much do we need to know in order to have a mutually beneficial exchange? So that also is going to put some limits on what a reasonable person would need to know and also helps take some of the sting out of the uh, criticism that Carson gives to Holly.